Nearly all birds love water and unlike other pets, they really enjoy bathing. Bathing helps to remove debris and maintain skin moisture. It's a healthy activity that's great for our birds and it hydrates their skin, encourages preening, and also helps them with any irritation that they might experience during molting. Parrots are tropical birds, therefore they are accustomed to regular rain and bathing opportunities. Birds in drier climates might resist bathing so frequently, but our tropical little dinosaurs are going to love bathing. channel my poodle and parrot pals Sandra and Mia here today and we're gonna talk about all things bathing right first things first before we get into the when and how of bathing let's talk about the rules when it comes to bathing your burp the first rule is that you only want to use plain water just filtered or from the sink, just plain water. You don't need to add anything to the water. You don't need to use any shampoos or soaps. And you definitely actually want to avoid using any products. Birds produce a special oil that they preen their feathers with, and this oil can be stripped through the use of soaps. This can result in unhealthy feathers and unhappy birds. If your bird has gotten dirty or they have something on them like oil that needs to be washed off, then you can use a low glycerin soap and that will be safe to use on your bird. The next thing is that you only wanna bathe your bird during the warmest parts of the day. Wet birds easily get chilled, which can be a serious health hazard for our birds. Bathe your bird during a warm part of the day so that your bird's feathers have a chance to dry completely and to ensure that they don't get chilled. You also wanna make sure that the water temperature is appropriate. So birds tend to like lukewarm to room temperature water when they are bathing. Water that is too hot or too cold can shock a bird's system. So you always want to check the temperature of the water before offering your bird a bath. Their bath water should be lukewarm or room temperature, and that will be perfecto. Speaking of water temperature, you also want to make sure that your home and the room temperature is fairly warm as well. You want to always ensure that when they're wet, especially that they're never near any drafts or any breezes. You also never want to completely soak your bird. In the wild, birds never allow their feathers to become completely soaked through. This can lead to loss of body heat and flight impairment. You also wanna make sure that wherever your bird is bathing, you wanna make sure that you clean and rinse this area down before and after. There could also be bacteria and things like that. So you just wanna make sure that everything is clean. And the last thing is you never want to force your bird into having a bath. If they're not interested or they're not in the mood or they don't want to have a bath or maybe they're fearful and it's something that you need to work through, then do not force them. We do not want bathing to be associated as a negative experience, but a positive experience. If you force the issue, it will cause them to view this activity as a negative experience. Our goal here is to get them to enjoy bathing so that they will initiate bathing on their own. Okay, so let's talk about the different ways of how you can bathe your bird. And always remember that every bird is going to have their own preference since they have their own personalities and they're just their own little dinosaurs. Some birds will take to it naturally, whereas others might be more hesitant and some might even be fearful. So for smaller birds, such as budgies, conures, parakeets, lovebirds, etc., these are some of the ways that you can try bathing your bird. So the first one is a bird bath bowl or a shallow dish. What you're going to do is fill this shallow dish or bird bath bowl with a little bit of lukewarm water, no more than one to two inches deep. 
The next one is a cage mounted bathing station. So there's lots of little different ones. There's ones that look like bathtubs or you can just get like a nice big circular bowl and just make sure that it's nice and shallow and that you don't fill it up too deeply so that they are able to get in there and move about. You wanna make sure that it's big enough that they can move around freely and splish and splash around. Now these next tips are going to work for small birds and they're going to be best suited for your big birds too. Mamma mia! So the first one, and this is perhaps one of the most popular ways that many birds like to shower, I know it's Mango's favorite way to shower, is misting. And all you need for this is a spray bottle, and you want to get a spray bottle that is going to be designated specifically for bathing your bird. And the only thing that ever goes in there and has ever been in there is water. You don't wanna use it for any other chemicals or solutions or products or anything like that. Use lukewarm water and never spray your bird directly in the face. You wanna make sure that you're spraying them from above to have a rainforest effect. Next is in the shower, and this one is really great, especially for big birds like macaws, and it's great for little birds like conures too. So you'll just wanna get a shower perch, and these are available online or at your local pet store and on Amazon, and they're really great because they just stick onto the wall, and it's a little perch that sticks out for your bird to hang out on while they're enjoying the mist of the shower and splish splashing around. Or you can either allow your bird to bathe in the shower on their own or with you. It might sound odd at first, but parrots are social creatures who love to bathe amongst friends. If you want to have a silly but fun bonding moment with your bird, try it out. Always make sure that your bird is never directly under a stream of water. You want to just let them shower off to the side from the mist of the water. And the next one is the kitchen sink or the bathtub. Put your sink on a lower setting or the bathtub so that the water will flow gently and not scare your bird off. When you're filling the tub or the sink, you always wanna make sure that it's just a little bit of water. You don't want it to be too deep, just enough that they can splish and splash around and enjoy bathing. Now let's talk about the reluctant bathers, the ones that don't wanna bathe or they're scared to bathe. Birds that are not used to bathing may need to be enticed. So running water often helps or placing a flat dish or a shallow dish like we talked about earlier, but you wanna fill it with some wet greens like spinach, watercress, curly kale, and other greens to encourage bathing. It's something that they can play around with and nibble on, which is healthy for them, and it usually entices them and gets them excited to bathe and play. You also wanna make sure that you're always offering your bird lots of praise and telling them what a great job they're doing and what a good little birdie or big birdie they are. And of course, treats help as well. So you wanna offer a treat when they're doing a good job and having a positive experience with bathing. Always make sure that you're also reading your bird's body language. If their eyes are closed and they are tensed up, they may not be enjoying the bath or they might be getting too soaked. But if you see them being playful, shaking out, flapping their wings, then they are enjoying themselves. Now let's talk about how often do we bathe our birds or create bathing opportunities for them. As with the different bathing methods, how often your bird is going to want to bathe is going to be up to each bird's unique preference. While a good rule of thumb is to offer your bird a bath once a week, many birds will desire the opportunity to clean up less or more frequently. Offer frequent bathing opportunities but you might find that in the warmer months, they're more likely to have more frequent baths and in the colder months, not as often. Your bird is going to give you signs and let you know when they want to have a bath and when they're in the mood for some water splish splashing around. So let's take a look at some of the indicators. <laughs> If you notice your bird bathing in their drinking water, then that is a sign that your bird has decided it's time for a bath. They will bathe in any manner that is available to them when they are in the mood for it. Does your bird species require more humidity than others? Birds that originate from tropical areas and rainforests are acclimated to daily rain showers and extra humid conditions. 
more frequent baths for birds of this type would likely improve feather conditions as well as their overall health and happiness. Is your bird going through a molt? This might be a really good indication that they're gonna need a few more extra baths during this period. When birds molt, new feathers push their way through the skin, dislodging old feathers on the way. These new feathers are covered with a sheath of keratin that sometimes needs to be softened so that the feather inside can break free. Bathing your bird more frequently during a molt can help release these new feathers and soothe their itchy skin. Baths also encourage preening, which will help your bird shed the old molted feathers. Now let's talk a little bit about baby birds and how and when to start bathing them. I get asked about bathing baby birds all the time, so I wanted to dedicate a little part of this video to specifically baby birds. As a new owner, it is essential how you introduce your parrot to the concept of bathing so that it will be an enjoyable experience. We want to make sure that their first bath and all of their baths as babies are positive experiences so that they enjoy bathing and they just go in and do it on their own. So you might want to have their first bath maybe in the kitchen sink or a shallow dish. With Mango and Mia, we offered them a shallow dish with some lukewarm water when they were babies and they were having their first bath at home. These are unfamiliar places for your baby bird, so you will need to have a few short visits before the bath. While holding your baby with its feet standing on the palms of your hand, lower the baby into the empty sink or bowl. Slowly encourage the baby to step off your hands into the low dish bowl, and then you can start to fill it with a little bit of water and encourage them to go in there to splish and splash around. Do this by gently splashing your fingers in the water. You can also introduce them to the mist bottle and mist one spray at a time while using a clicker and treats to reward your bird whenever they react positively to each spray. When baby birds have all of their feathers and they're weaning or have been weaned, they're usually going to take interest in having baths on their own. We have to be really mindful with babies because a baby's feathers aren't as protective as they'll become when they are an adult parrot. And you always, always need to ensure that they are not cold or shivering or near any drafts because they are even more fragile when they are babies. If you're getting your baby bird from a responsible breeder, then you're going to probably get your bird when they have all of their feathers and they've already been weaned. So as soon as you bring them home, they will be ready to start bathing and you can start training them and having those positive bathing experiences. Now let's talk about drying off and how your bird should be drying after they've had a bath or a shower. The best way to dry your parrot is to just let them air dry. Make sure that the room or your home is nice and warm so that they are in a warm environment when they are drying off. Indoors, especially in the colder months, you can also offer a bird lamp. If you live in a hot climate like we did when we lived in Thailand, then you can just roll your bird out in their aviary into the sunshine for 10 to 15 minutes and the sunshine is gonna be really great for their feather health and vitamin D. You don't want to use a blow dryer to dry your bird. A blow dryer will be too hot for their skin, but most hair dryers also have a non-stick Teflon coating on the inside. This coating gives off invisible odorless fumes that are harmless to people. However, these fumes are toxic to all birds. You can help your bird dry off with a towel so you can wrap them around in a towel. And this is a great thing to actually do with baby birds. And this is what we did with mango. Essentially, you're making a little birdie burrito. And last but not least, when it comes to bathing, let's talk about shivering. After a bath, you may observe that your parrot is shaking or shivering. While this may be a sign of a chill, and if it's cold, then they're probably shivering and you wanna get them to a warmer area, ASAP. But if it is a warm room with no drafts, then it usually means that your parrot is drying itself off naturally. 
This is normal behavior. A parent's chest muscles contract rapidly and repeatedly after a bath. This looks like shivering, but it's not. It's actually the way that a parent creates body heat after getting wet. So that's it for today, my poodle and parrot pals. As always, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I hope that your birdies enjoy Splish Splashing Around. Splish Splash, having a bath. Splish Splash. <laughs>